Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, today we'll discuss about regulation number five. Uh, the previous regulations are already available in the playlist. This regulation is about collateral management. Uh, these are the prudential regulations issued by the State Bank of Pakistan. And uh, there are four categories in which these re regulations are available. One is uh, risk management, then we have uh, uh, anti-money laundering, then corporate governance, and one more is their operations regarding related to operations. These categories, these regulations, regulation one to five are related to the risk management category. And regulation number five is regarding the monitoring, monitoring system, uh, which is advised for the banks. So we will study in collateral management in this uh, uh, video. Collateral management is basically, what is collateral? Collateral is basically a security which is uh, given in, in, when, a, when a person, when an individual seeks for uh, any loan from the bank or the DFI. So this security is basically called collateral, which uh, the bank can use in case of default of the borrower and bank can sell that and get the proceeds to cover its loss. So in that, in that regard, banks and DFIs shall have in place collateral management policy duly approved by the board of directors or country head in case of branches of foreign banks. It means there are two points. First, one point is that board of directors. And generally, a collateral management policy shall be decided and approved by the board of directors of a bank, of a DFI. However, if a bank has foreign branches as well, then country head uh, shall be uh, a, a, an approving authority in that case. And the policy may be part of bank's overall credit policy or separate as well. It means that, that there are two conditions. A bank can also make, make a separate document for the bank's credit policy. And, and, and uh, secondly, if a bank may deem appropriate, it may also make a separate document. It can make up um, uh, the collateral management policy can be made a part of the bank's overall credit policy, a subcomponent of that, or as a separate document as a bank deems fit uh, and as the bank thinks uh, or deems uh, it appropriate. The policy shall clearly delineate the responsibilities in various scenarios, including safe custody and inspection of collateral. Because when you, uh, uh, when you ask for a collateral and to keep a security before giving loan to any borrower individual customer, uh, you have to decide that uh, how much uh, the amount of the, co of the collateral will be uh, there, how much uh, that amount will cover. And secondly, if the collateral is already uh, available, there are the different conditions. For example, in few cases, you keep the documents of some property, for example, or in, that, in some cases, you pledge stocks uh, as well. In that scenario, if, if a bank is pledging stock or hypothecation of, hypothecation of stocks is, uh, is, uh, is being kept by the bank as a collateral, then there is a responsibility of the bank to inspect that collateral before uh, keeping it, before taking it as a collateral, and also to uh, maintain a safe custody of that collateral as well. Where the bank and the, uh, uh, now one thing we have to decide in that scenario is that uh, we have to see if the bank is a sole lender or a bank is lending in collaboration with multiple lenders or the but banks have made a consortium because the lending amount was too much and single bank could not afford to lend that much amount. It was out of its exposure. So multiple lenders have made a consortium and now they have financed the project. So it, uh, it has to be seen that whether the bank is a sole lender or a consortium has been made and then inspection and safe custody, all these scenarios are taken into account. And then a policy shall be, uh, the policy shall be catering all these aspects which I have described. The banks and DFI shall devise an appropriate mechanism to ensure that the financing extended, it means that the loan given, the lending which has been made by a single bank or by a consortium of banks is utilized for the intended purpose. It means that for the purpose which, uh, for which the financing has been given, it has been used for the same purpose, not for any purpose uh, which is not prescribed. Uh, further, they will also ensure that financing is not used for non-productive purpose like holding. This is also a very important point. It is a responsibility of the bank or a consortium. Uh, they would, in, in case of a consortium, the bank will decide that who will take the lead and who will keep all these checks. So this is also the, these, this criteria shall also be included in the policy which is being made by the banks for the purpose of collateral. Okay. Now, next uh, point is regarding joint inspection and play stock. Joint inspection, uh, before moving to the details, I would like to point out here is that joint inspection is made when uh, 
um, a consortium is made when more than one multiple lenders are involved then uh, uh, a joint inspection is uh, the case of joint inspection arises so let's see what this point says all the banks dfi is financing any particular customer against pledge of stocks because inspection and safe custody arises only in that scenario when you have to uh, take care of the stock when you have to uh, maintain the safe custody of some sort of stock and you have to uh, the stock cannot be placed inside the bank and like the paper property papers etc and you have to maintain a warehouse where these these um uh, the pledge stocks could be kept so in that scenario only um the case of inspection and safe custody will arise so in that scenario uh, when the banks and dfis are will be financing any particular customer against pledge of stocks of below mentioned qualities like cotton sugar wheat rice and edible oil in that case once a quarter they will make a joint uh, they will conduct a joint inspection where aggregate exposure against the stock equals or exceeds the amount shown in the commodity list this the table you can see the where the aggregate accumulated exposure is 500 million for cotton 500 million for sugar if this threshold exceeds then the joint inspection once in a quarter shall be made in in, in another uh, point in another scenario uh, this can also be happen that uh, in, in case of a multiple banks in case of a consortium the bank which has the largest and committed exposure shall act as a lead bank dfi and that bank will coordinate uh, quarterly joint inspection in case of two or more joint inspection can be with the banks and joint inspection can be with the party which has uh, kept the stock which has pledged with the stock in case of two or more banks have the same level if there is a consortium in in that consortium two banks have the same la largest committed exposure then both banks will mutually agree that which bank shall take the lead the lead bank dfi once selected shall perform coordination for one year and later on when when the one year shall complete that bank that lead bank shall subsequently transfer the responsibility um of it during the during uh, during or after one year period uh, to some other bank uh, which is second after that bank for, in terms of the largest exposure then uh, another point is that these all things which i am describing are a part of the proper credit policy and that uh, proper collateral management policy and that collateral management policy i will uh, re, re uh, state that this uh, credit collateral management policy can be made separately or it can be a part of the credit policy as a whole and it can be a sub component of the credit policy or it can be made as a separate document as well the borrower's basic fact sheet shall serve as a main source for obtaining information on exposures committed by banks and dfis against plus stocks or for any particular customer basically basically the basic fact sheet borrower's basic fact sheet provides the details regarding uh, the customer information and it tells us that how much uh, other uh, exposure other than that the other than the one which the customer is asking for he has already taken so in that because banks have already have the limit so they have, they cannot exceed that limit so in that case if uh, a, a, a particular customer can only take specific uh, exposures and uh, both sides have the have to see this thing so when you get the information then you see that what sort of uh, uh, credibility financial credibility the customer has whether we should even if you have not already given any exposure uh, taken any exposure with that customer if he has already taken exposure with uh, with other banks then you have to analyze, analyze it, his or her financial condition in order to grant any uh, lending or any financing so th that is the case and so that is why basic borrowers basic fact sheet is a very important document and the main source of information regarding the exposure committed by the banks to uh, that customer for the pledge stocks any any bank dfi taking exposure on a customer against pledge of stocks shall inform after seeking prior uh, written consent from the obligor as per law about the same to all the banks because the same stock cannot be uh, you have to see that how many times it the same stock has been pledged for taking the um, uh, 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 the uh, uh, exposure from other banks so it is very important and crucial point in the, in the case of bank so if any bank is giving any uh, any exposure if any bank is taking any exposure and giving a uh, finance funding to the borrower against that pledge of stocks it shall inform the other banks as well so and this will be done after seeking a prior approval from the uh, individual customer or the obligor in, in both are the same things as per law uh, about the same to all banks already financing that customer within 5 working days of the credit approval and this information about the other banks who are financing that customer it shall be obtained from the borrower's basic fact sheet so it is very important because so uh, there's a it this point uh, 
tells us that the probability that the banks shall be at loss because uh, because of the miscommunication and, and uh, unknowing of the fact that the, the same stocks have been pledged so many times, this probability shall reduce and the bank shall secure themselves in that case. So this is the point. So this was about the uh, regulation number five where we studied about the collateral management and uh, discussed very important points which were mentioned in the prudential regulation uh, for the commercial banks by the State Bank of Pakistan in the risk management category. There are 10 almost regulations and we have studied regulation number five uh, in this video. I hope you have got an idea of the main points and uh, if there is any ambiguity or any point which is not clear to you, do let me know in the comments and we'll see you in the, with the next video uh, with the next regulation. Uh, take care of yourself. Uh, goodbye.